spiritual nature, but when he talked about the kingdom, he specifically talked about the kingdom in parables. He, he kind of hid a truth in parables that he wanted people to find out. Now, we got two types of people. We got multitudes and we've got disciples. There's a big difference. Disciples were given to know certain things. Multitudes were kind of left out. Multitudes are the type of people that want free things. Multitudes are the type of people that wanted Jesus' gifts, wanted his anointing, wanted some of the things he had to offer for free. But the disciples, they were the learners. They were the people that studied Jesus for who he was. They were, those were the people that had to give up certain things that they held dear for a true higher calling. Those were the people that gave up their lifestyle. Yeah. Multitudes were people that just gathered just to hear Jesus speak. Half of them probably didn't even follow what he said. Amen. Now, multitudes, people that are in the multitude type crowd have a lot of trouble coming to church. Churches like this invest time in praise, invest time in worship, and invest time in the anointing. Multitudes, a lot of them can't be committed, and they're running around from church to church to church, and they keep going to different places because they want to invest time in Jesus. Now, you can come to church and not fully get the kingdom. Come on. I'm going to read another. Now, the level of interest you have in coming to church is going to determine what you're going to get out of the sermon. When the pastor's up here preaching, you come to church, you're sitting there, you don't know what's going on. You're not going to get anything out of it. It don't matter how hard he's trying. You have to invest time, and you have to pay attention to understand. That's the type of person that's a disciple. Pastors can't make it happen for you. Now, Matthew 13, 16. Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and blessed are your ears, for they hear. Again, if you pay attention and you listen, you're going to get what's out of the kingdom. But if you just come and not to pay attention, you're not going to understand it. There's a lot of things you have to let go. You can't pile the kingdom on top of everything you've been taught your whole life. Because if you do that, you're going to have a mixture of things. Some things that are truthful and some things that aren't. In other words, if you've grown up 20 years, you've been living a certain lifestyle, you can't just put the kingdom on top of that and say, all right, I'll continue from here. You have to learn how to erase everything you've done. You have to learn how to ask forgiveness, how to pray, how to change your lifestyle. There's another scripture I want to read. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking godly pearls. When he found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. I'm going to come back to that now. Now, I go to a church in a inner city church. Pretty big church, but there's one thing I like about it that the pastor says. He said in the sermon a couple weeks ago, he said that a lot of churches are getting so big, thousands of members, and nobody knows anything. It's starting to become an entertainment-based thing. I'm not putting down big churches, but a lot of times it's about the entertainment. It's about the fun things they have to offer. It's about the programs. It's about the workout facilities. Now. Look at your neighbor and say value. value. Say value. value. I'm going to read another sermon. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof sells everything he has and buys the field. It said the treasure was hidden in a field of dirt. Now, when you're looking for the kingdom, you're not always going to find it in the best places. Come on. Come on now. When you're looking for the righteous living, when you're looking to be like Jesus, sometimes you're going to have to find the kingdom in places you don't want to have to look for. Yeah. Now, again, there's multitudes and disciples. Disciples look for the kingdom in the dirt. Multitudes, sometimes they're just looking for the dirt. See, it's not always pretty. Jesus didn't, all, Jesus didn't just go to church every Sunday. He went to the, he didn't just go preach to the Pharisees every Sunday. He didn't go preach to the upright, I'm holier than you type people. He preached to thieves, liars, adulteresses, sinners, fornicators. He didn't just bring the kingdom to all the pretty people. He didn't just bring it to all the rich people. See, the day churches start looking down upon people. 
for their lifestyle, when they're trying to change and say, you can't come in here, you know, not even giving them a chance. That's the day Jesus is going to come down, start going on the streets and doing it himself. See, he doesn't, he doesn't like it when people are just simply rejected like that. Come on. He'll start walking in the bars, in the brothels, all the places, and he'll go to and witness him himself if he has to. Now, I've got a funny story here. My pastor was on his honeymoon, and he was in South Carolina. He was heading down to Florida to take a little vacation. And he had just got done from a seminary, and a bunch of pastors decided to play a prank on him. They put some sardines in his car, in his air conditioner. They didn't know about it. They had, he had no clue. He's sitting there riding through South Carolina, just turns on the air conditioning. He's like, man, South Carolina stinks. <laughs> gets down to Georgia. He says, maybe Georgia would be better. He gets down to Georgia. He said, man, Georgia stinks too. He said, maybe when I get to Florida, we'll get that ocean breeze. We'll start to feel good. He gets down to Florida. Same smell. Come to find out, someone gave him a phone call and told him what they did about the sardines in his car. Now, the moral of the story is, if everywhere you go stinks, you probably carry it. If you've had nine jobs and you can't work with anybody, if you've gone to 15 different churches and they're all hypocrites, something's wrong. It's probably you have a problem with people. You've got to go through the dirt. You've got to get past the people. You've got to get past those annoying things to find it. You gotta go through not working and relaxing to working hard to find the kingdom. Yeah, right. You gotta wave through religion. Yeah. You gotta go through hurt. Yeah. Come on. You gotta go through pain. Yeah. Christian walk is like a perspective. John in the Bible couldn't see the heavenly vision until he heard a voice. Now, the heavenly vision was changed. Heaven wasn't changed, but it was how he looked at it. Yeah. Now, You've heard the songs that magnify the Lord. When you have a magnifying glass, when you look at an ant, first of all, you, you stand 15 feet away from it, things going to look like a little speck. When you get that magnifying glass and look at it, it looks a lot bigger. You didn't change the size of it. You changed how you were looking at it. So you have to actually change the perspective of how you're treating God, not just as a handout. Now, I think the field treasure in the field he was referring to was people because people are the reason for 90% of the problems in the world today it's not the prettiest people in the nicest places that are always getting the understanding of the kingdom when the kingdom was announced God didn't have when Jesus came Jesus didn't have a priest wearing a $20,000 robe announcing him he had a man named John who was from the desert, who ate locusts and drank wild honey. He didn't have someone incredible. He didn't have someone born in the kingdom. He had someone like that, someone that would be considered a reject. Yeah. What he was trying to do there is say that you're not going to find me in all the pretty places. You're going to have to look through all the hard places. Yeah. 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 Yet John was the one pulling the crowds. Now, who was going to bear this King, who was going to bear Jesus? He got a 15-year-old, unwed, pregnant mother. Back in the Jewish times, that was a no-no. Yeah. That kind of stuff didn't happen. You get stoned for that. He did it in a town no one knew about, a town called Bethlehem. He did it in a cave, hidden, just like the treasure in the field was hidden. All the places that he came from, they were hidden. He didn't have to come out in kingly fashion. He came out in the fashion that nobody would have wanted. Now, we got hospitals. Now, he, he wasn't born in a hospital. He wasn't born in a fancy hospital. He was born in a manger. That's probably the worst place you want to be born. Who found Jesus? First was the three kings. They were seekers. They sought. They looked for Jesus. They went through the dirt. They didn't worry about finding Jesus in the right place. They knew that Jesus was not necessarily going to be in a kingly fashion. That's the whole nature of the kingdom. Looking for God in unexpected people, unexpected places, unexpected things. Doesn't matter who you are, whether you got the biggest scoundrel in your family running around, you can find the kingdom. 